welcome to fmchain.tv. So let's talk about FileMaker, everyone. Uh, it's been a very, I haven't been the last couple of days, been around, Nick has been doing stuff. There's been a lot of really interesting news uh, in terms of what we're doing with live streams and what, uh, cl talking to Claris executive management about it. I'm very excited. We'll have some forthcoming announcements probably over the next two or three weeks, um, but it's very, very exciting. Some of you will be at, at the DevCon slash Engage. That'll be February 6th around there. Uh, look forward to seeing you if you're going to be in that area. So today is about FileMaker certification. Let's, let's talk about FileMaker certification. So Claris has, historically, Claris would create a written test of FileMaker certification. They would update it every year, every two years. Once the management team took over at Claris, the, the certification was one of these peripheral things that went by the, by the wayside. And they did create in 2020 a FileMaker certification. And so the problem was that the idea is that people, that the certification would last two years and you would have to take it every two years. The rub is, is that I have done this before um, where I've, I've thought about creating a kind of a certification or some sort of test to give not necessarily the live stream people, but the people who buy my training, so they could benchmark themselves where they're at. Um, I can tell you it's shockingly difficult to write a good test question to test what you want to test without giving the answer away, without also confusing people. I can tell you it's very, very difficult. So Claris has pivoted a little bit. And what they're creating is they're creating, um, at the current time, there's three kind of tracks of certifications so these came out not too long ago this all was started by larry who's actually not here because when the goal is today is that when you're done with today's live stream if you haven't taken gone and taken the 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 filemaker pro certification you can go take it i think you'll pass it if you just hang up with me and go do it you can take it and pass it you'll be done basically so what there is there's a filemaker pro set of tests and there's every test is going to have a low medium and high claris gives them names like associate is low specialist uh which you'll see here is their medium test and the high one is expert but there's no uh, they haven't released the expert one on pro yet. So right, even though there's going to be three on pro, they've only released the beginning and intermediate ones, both of which I think everyone here can take and pass today uh, without any difficulty. And so we're going to pivot here momentarily to hammering through. All the questions are the same. The, que the book, the test is open book, which means that you can have the window open in one area and take the test and then have FileMaker on another window trying to figure out what the answers are. So it's not really, a des it's not designed as like an employment certification, kind of like I have an engineering degree or I'm a lawyer and I'm a doctor from the Harvard blah, 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 medical, blah, 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 blah. no, this, uh, they've changed their tactics with this a little bit. These are what they call digital badges. It's kind of, they call the word certification, but the idea is that they make it not such a difficult lift. And by engaging people, even though it's open book, you still have to go through the process of reading the question, understanding it to a degree and what they're doing is by you even going through the test and, and answering the questions correctly you've been exposed you've been exposed to the material one you have some knowledge too and because you've been thinking about it it's called mind share mind share is the idea where someone is living in your head rent free Right. So if you think about FileMaker all the time or you think about your wife all the time, your husband all the time or your dog or your cat all the time, um, they're in your mind. You're thinking about them. If you're thinking about them, you're probably going to invest more in them is the idea. So if Claris is in your head and you're thinking about it because you've taken two tests, you're going to take two more tests, then the idea is that you're there, you're they're, they're, they're generating more engagement. It's basically driving engagement. Engagement means you want to use it, you use it, you play with it. It doesn't mean you're an expert. It doesn't mean that you suck. It just means that you're engaged. Clarish really at the end of the day doesn't give a sh how good you are. They want you engaged using the product uh, and, and, and paying them money for the product at a real capitalistic sort of level. That's what it's about. I'm all good with that. So anyway, so the tact is a little different here. Before it was really about like something for your employment, for your resume. Now it's kind of a good to have, um, but I, I, but I think it does help with some credibility that you've made the effort at least to go through this. So you got FileMaker Pro, kind of low, medium, and high. You got FileMaker Server, low, medium, and high. And the low one, I, I think most of you can handle the low one pretty easily. And then there is a Connect. Now I'm not doing Connect. I haven't done Connect. 
um, I'll get to connect when I've finished. I went, uh, finish going through the process. Now, understand if I go over here to Claris uh, FileMaker Server, I've already looked at the test for this one. Um, and when you click on this, it tells you what it's about, what you're going to learn. And then all these are going to be videos that you optionally can watch. Now, Wim DeCourt does the server ones, and he did a pretty good job. Um, in fact, a couple, there's a couple side stories here. We're going to talk about server tomorrow a little bit. Today is just on Pro. But what you do is you click in here. You're, it's like a five-minute video. And if you watch the videos, you absolutely have all the questions and answers. What we're going to do is I'm going to come over here. I've got in my hot little hands the questions and answers that I already went through and answered all the questions. I mean, that's how secret this is, as I took screenshots and printed out. It's not a secret. But um, if we go through it real quick, it's faster for you to learn this material than it is to cheat on the test. Let's just frame it that way. All right, so we're going to start. I'm just going to run through things that I think that might be slightly more difficult. Just so you understand, Margaret took these tests without watching the videos. She's only been just what, hanging out with us here on the live stream. She passed the first one by, what did you pass the first one, like 90-something percent, and the second one is 80%? 88, and then I did 88 in the first one, and then I did... Uh... 80 on the second one. Correct. And the minimum passing score is 80, so you have to have at least a B. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to look at the FileMaker Pro Associate. It's a beginner one. And I'm just going to – I'm not going to read the questions and the answers for you. I'm just going to cover what you have to understand about this, right? So in our, in our training and also in the video training in here, they, they want to – they talk about um, doing a, a, a fine command, so understanding fine commands. So if you're in – uh, FM, if I go over to starting point, like a CRM or something. Okay, this is one where we've been blowing stuff up. Oh, there's only one record in there. Man, I need some more records. The idea about the records here, okay, well, this one's at least easy to see, is that if you're doing a search for people in different states or different countries, you do well, you do a find, right? Find command, right? We're all doing finds, Margaret. Feel free to verbalize what they're saying, right? As we're going to go here. Since you're here, we're going to make it interactive. If I do a find <laughs> and I say... I want to be, it doesn't matter what the field is, state, city, country, doesn't matter. If I go down here to address and I type in the state as being California, if I want to search for Florida or something, I want all the records from California and all the records from Florida, what would you do? You do a new find request, right? You do find, do a new request, you come over and type Florida, right? That gives you your found set, okay? You need to mm -hmm. know about that, okay? Once again, if you get it wrong, you could go back almost immediately and uh, take the test. There's no delay. You just go back, and I think you – I don't know if you start – I haven't failed one of these yet, but you just go back and do it again, right? It's, it's, it's the same questions in the same order. This is it right here, okay? So this is the order kind of we're going in. You should know what a constrained found set is, right? Or, or how, what, how, what, what the word constrained means. So the idea of constraint is that you have a found set and then you essentially do another find on top of that and it limits it down. This is actually the hardest question probably on the whole two tests of this first, th this one right here on the constrained found set, mostly because I don't use constraint that much. There's extend and constraint. They don't ask about extend, they just ask about constraint, right? So learn about that. What is a constraint? And, and they'll, and if you read the questions, don't let it throw you. They'll, um, you know, you know, you're, they'll say something like, well, search for all the contacts, da, 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 and then show all the contacts in this other group, right? Well, if, they, if, if someone says the word groups, where is the word groups used in FileMaker Pro? Nowhere. That's a dead giveaway. So what you do is you look for words that are fake words, and you get rid of that. Those are the two hardest questions. Everything else gets simpler here, right? What is a foreign key? Ed Burkle, what is a foreign key? Do you know what a foreign key is? Okay. True or false? A foreign key is a field related uh, in a related table that is used to link to a record in another table. True or false? Ed Burkle. True. True. Correct. All right. Well, you got number three correct, Ed. Good job. A layout object is used to view data from a related table. Okay. Someone can guess that. We're going to move on. The following is a correct statement about the status toolbar. Okay. Can the status toolbar used to get you a hot date on Tinder? Yes or no? Can the status toolbar uh, restore a backup from FileMaker server? Yes or no? I mean, I'm being a little flip here, but it's that simple, okay? I'm just moving along here. Pretty soon you're going to be done with this test. What type of field? Uh, this one is for Kathy. Kathy, are you there? Kathy, I'm not picking on you, Kathy. I'm going to give you a chance if you want to answer this. Kathy, what type of field would you use? Defining fields, field definitions. What kind of field would you define if you wanted to, to store the precise moment that a certain event occurred by date and time? And don't 
Cat, do you want to answer that? It's not hard. It's, it's really simple because there's only text fields, number fields, calculation fields, date fields, time fields, summary fields, and timestamp fields. What of those would be the field? Let's see. What is part of schema? Okay. Okay. What things are schema? Uh, David Angel, that one's for you. David has a question. Like, like properties? I think it's a statement. Is that a statement or a question, right? Uh, schema is the same. If I say the structure of a file or the schema of a file, everyone here should really know that, right? So what is the difference? Structure and schema, I'll tell you, are the, mean the same thing. So if you're, if you're talking about structure and schema, that's one part of a FileMaker file. Mm, the data is the other part of the file. Now, can you tell me what might be some data? That's not on the test, but tell me what might be some schema. Uh, they like to test you about deleting records, right? If you delete records in FileMaker, can you get them back? No. Okay. And some of you are going, well, you can if you go to a backup of the server. No, no. Th these questions are very narrow. These questions aren't about best practices. The questions are not about, you know, using another product to resuscitate something or do something. It's, they're very narrow, okay? Uh, Ed Berkel says layouts, tables. So David Angel, his answer is that uh -uh, answer on the test. Ed Berkel's uh, answer is correct, but that wasn't what they asked. So, and one thing, I'm not giving you all this stuff, but if you can answer this stuff, it's multiple choice. You don't have to write that. It's easy. All of you should take this when you're done. So you're going to go to the Claris. You're going to log into the Claris community. Do a search for Claris community. Then you're going to log in with your, your, your email and your password. And then you're going to go to Academy right here. Okay, everyone pay attention. Then you're going to pick the test you want to do. I would do start with the associate and then do the specialist because the specialist is supposed to be a little bit harder. And the expert, for those of you who haven't heard this yet, the expert level test for FileMaker Pro is not out yet. On server, there is the associate level test. And then Wim DeCourt has shot, but it's not out yet. Uh, he gave it to Claire. She shot it. The uh, mid-level test, the specialist test. And then uh, tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about the server side, but then he would still have to shoot the uh, expert level. I don't know how hard expert will be. The way they're going here, I don't think it's going to be that hard. And even if it's hard, it's open book, which means that if you get it wrong, you probably go backwards and fix the answer and then you're done. It's mostly about you being engaged and learning. It's like this live stream. It's about engaged and learning. It's not crazy anymore like it's 250 questions and you got three hours to do it and, you know, it's crazy you know, uh, ODBC questions about connecting SQL and Oracle to FileMaker. I mean, I don't see that being on the test. It might be on this server expert test, but not yet. So what what statement best describes what happens when you delete records in a database, okay? Anyone? Let's just text victim. Mikey, go. Mikey, go. Not not Mike Wallace, Mikey, the mic, the mic above that. Hey, Mike. What was the question? Yeah, you got to pay attention in class, Mikey. What statement best describes, oh, let me just back up. If you delete a record in FileMaker, what, at a very basic level, what happens? Like if I say delete uh, found set, like if I go up and say, there's delete individual records, also delete found set. Do you know the difference? The <laughs> record is removed from the file. Yep, what and, there's said. No, and there's no undo. And if you do, and if you delete the found set, it's going to remove the found set, right? The found set is whatever your found set is. You should know what a found set is, okay? Um, we're not going to cover that. That's pretty basic. This is a, an interesting one. Uh, in FileMaker, you can view as up here. See these right here, the view as. We got form view, list view, table view. If I go to, do, 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 do. oh, I go to layout mode, sorry. I have to do it in layout mode. You go to layout setup, and you say views. You should know that these are three views. We talk about them all the time. Form view, list view, table view. Table view is like a developer spreadsheet thing. That is courtesy of Ryan Rosenberg, right? Former vice president of marketing at Claris. Thought that was the most amazing thing ever. Um, so those are the views. There are no other views. So there's a question here that says, hey, you can view as this, you can view as this, you can view as this. Just make sure you know those three right there, okay? If you want to display the page number on the bottom of a report, right? Do we know about that? So if you go to, if you're like, say we're going to go to a report, let me say mouse. Let's see, invoices. Let's see, here, here's a printed report right here, okay? 
See the page number down here? If you want a page number, you want the date, other things like that, you can do these little inserts in layout mode. You can say insert a special symbol. You don't have to memorize all these, but these are the high, high uh, occurring one, the date symbol, the time symbol, the user symbol, the page numbers, these things here, right? You should know about those, right? Okay. And you know how you got to this. You're in layout mode. You go to insert. You put it on here, right? And it generates a little symbol down here in brackets. I don't know. Can I? Let me see if I can zoom. Oh, there we go. There we go. See that stuff right there? You should probably remember that. I don't know how I made it more direct than that. What's following true about value lists? <laughs> this one's a little squirrely. This is like kind of a, it's like opinion, a little bit of a question. But what's true about value lists? If, um, if you help people do data entry, like if you give everyone uh a bunch of text fields in data entry. Whether they need text fields or not, they're gonna put in there whatever they want. If you put in check boxes or radio buttons or a pop-up list or a pop-up menu or something like that, you're helping to direct and improve the accuracy of the data entry, right? Now, sometimes you need a text field because it's a paragraph of text, right? But other times, maybe not. So just think about using value, if you remember all these control styles over here on the right, it's called a control style over here. You go to layout mode, right pane, right panel of the right pane, right here you have a control style. Control styles are driven by value list, okay? Now once again, as a reminder to everyone, if you go to the Claris, uh, you log into Claris Academy, or log into Claris Community, then you hit Academy, then you come down here to like, one of the ones you wanna do, it's gonna give you the videos. If you watch the videos, they're very short, not nearly as exciting, but they are, they have the content. And at the very bottom, the very last video is not a video, it's where you take the test, okay? Right, makes sense? And so you don't have to watch the videos. Videos are optional, you don't have to watch, you just watch me and go take the test. Like my senior engine at RCCC, they're just taking these tests cold and they're all scoring like, well, typically, they're mostly scoring 96s because there's one or two trick, I don't know, they're not trick questions. There's really poorly written questions in here that we're going to get to momentarily. How are we doing on time? We're doing good on time? Okay. Well, we're at 125, so. Okay, we're motoring right along. How do you create a new layout? So uh, the question is, is creating a new layout. How do you create a new layout? And they say, uh, now, if I say a list layout, what is a list layout? We talked about this momentarily just a moment ago. If you're over here, and you create a layout, you can create a new layout right here. You can duplicate a layout. Yeah, that's an interesting, some of these questions are not great, um, but you can view as a list, right? So if you're in a layout, you can say layout setup, you can view as a list. I mean, it's, or or you can select it here, right? Um, but there are, uh, remember that there is a layout. Uh, I don't, I, I call it a wizard, but it's a new layout. If you go up under here and go through the new layout, just remember that allows you to select the kind of device, right? Computer, touch, and then you have form list. These three right here mirror the view as up here. This one up here is window dressing. It's lipstick on a pig. It's a list view that's got some other sub summaries and stuff in it. True or false, you can organize your layouts into folders. No one say anything. Open book test. What scenarios might make a button make sense in FileMaker? So where should you use buttons and why why might you use a button? Not a button bar, just a button, okay? You should have some ideas about that. They give you a couple. <laughs> uh, like some of them are like, you could use a button to interact with data in preview mode. You're like, mm -hmm. if you've never used preview mode, go play with it a little bit, but that's useful, right? Um, I'm not telling you, that's not the answer. I'm just saying that that's that, that kind of stuff. Some of this is really basic stuff. That's what I'm saying, okay? Uh, what is the advantage of container fields and FileMaker? So first, what do, what if, what do, Margaret, what do, I'm not even gonna look at that. I'm just gonna ask Margaret. Margaret, what do container fields, what do they do? Um, I hear they do this really good job at storing things like PDFs and videos and pictures. Okay, well, they don't use the word PDFs and videos. In I know, here, they use media, I think, I, I, is the I, term. I, don't give it away. Oh, don't sorry. give it away. Well, you asked me for the answer. <laughs> No, I asked you for your verbal off-the-cuff answer, not for the textbook answer. Everyone just scratch that. You didn't hear. <laughs> How do you manually export records out of, of FileMaker? What's a found set? Okay. What is a found set, and how does it affect exports? 
Are you asking me or the general audience? No, I, that was a loose floating one. And we're almost done with the, the basic test here. Then we'll move on with the intermediate test. So tell me what, uh, if you can name off the top of your head, what are the parts of a layout? Just so, just, and what, what are they good for? So there's a bunch of them right here. So here's a title header. What is this good for? Where does this show up? Quick, 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 quick. Go, Margaret. Uh, wait, hold on. I have to, I'm staring at chats. I'm not looking at your screen. Give, oh, give never mind. Top. Let, let, okay. X Lena Wix is. Uh, we're gonna go with Excellent Wix, which is a kitty cat with a little thing on its head. All right, so Excellent Wix, you're now up to bat on the question answer. So, uh, top title header goes on the top of the first page only. Then you have the header, which goes at the top of every page where the title is. It generally where the title. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the header goes every at the top of every page where the title header is not there. Okay, so. Yeah, title header goes on the top of the first page. The header goes on the top of every other page, essentially. The body is a record. The grand trailing summary is basically the the final final footer. It's like a a fine. They don't. They, if they were consistent, they call it the ending footer. It's like the opposite of a title header. You have the title header. The opposite is the grand trailing summary footer. And then the footer is the bottom of kind of every page. They also have this thing called called na top top navigation. Do they have a bottom navigation? I don't know if they do or don't. Layout setup. That's a good question. Sometimes the things that you think here should be here. Uh, let me see. Body. Oh, you got to go layout. Yeah, this is another one that's obnoxious. Create. Top navigation. Yeah, bottom navigation. I've never used bottom nav, but I guess you go ahead. So top and bottom nav are for designed for iOS devices, but they're a section that goes on the screen. And if you zoom in or zoom out on your interface, they don't want the top buttons or the bottom buttons to zoom in or out, right? So they stay the same size. Everything else gets bigger and smaller. Does that make sense? Because the running thought is if you're zooming in and out, you're trying to read a record or something, but the developer of the application probably sized the buttons correctly. That's the running assumption, right? So the top, that that's that's a little bit more of a tricky question, but you have to know what the body parts are. True and false. This is great. Ready for the next one? Kyle Williams, true or false? If you delete a record, it can be undone. And don't get cute. I warned everyone about being cute. Don't tell me you can go to the server and use the command line. And blah, blah, blah. Yes or no? Delete a record. Can you get it back? No. Okay, not natively is not a possible question on the test. When you create a file on FileMaker Pro, you're prompted to choose a theme. What are themes and styles, how they look? Is it going to say, what would you like to do if you create a new file? Not a new layout, new file. Next question. When you're doing a search, like we do this all the time. We're doing searches. We're in databases. Uh, let me go back to a data entry screen here real quick. So, oh, by the way, see how everything's super jumbo? Because I zoomed in. If I had a title header or a or title navigation or a bottom navigation, those sections would not have zoomed in and out. So I'm going to hit zoom view, actual size. See, and it kind of went back. Actually, oh, it is top nav. Okay, here we go. I did not even know that my team did this. So if I zoom in, watch up here, this little section right up here. Okay, I'm going to start zooming in with command plus. One, two, three, four. Oh, notice it doesn't move. Remember that, it's on the test. Okay, if you're going to send a copy of, a, of an FMP12 file to a mobile device, this one you'd think is really hard, but... Think about how you can send a file to a mobile device, okay? You can email the, uh, see here they say, can you send a, oh, here they use the word custom app, okay? Custom app, which is an FMP12 file. Send an email to yourself, yep. Post it to some sort of cloud sharing service like Dropbox, yep. Use AirDrop on iOS, yeah, that'll definitely work. Um, there, there'll be another answer here potentially that's one that that you, you just doesn't exist. It's a false false flag kind of thing. Once again, I'm not going to give you the exact answers because I go through this, but all of you should take this. You all pass it. If you're doing a search for, uh, you're in FileMaker, you're doing a search for a bunch of records, and I want to find all the records that have an empty value in a spot, Labo 404, are you there? How do you do a search for an empty record? You go into, you go to find mode, you go into field, you put a reserved character in there. What character do you put? Yeah, okay, Ed Burkle just cut in line. He took care of it. Thank you, Ed. It's an equal sign. Searches for, it allows you to search for kind of exact, but if you put equal in there and nothing in there, then it finds exactly nothing, which is how that works. Yo, this one's great. 
uh, by default, Claris FileMaker Pro. See, this is, mm, I almost missed this question. By default, FileMaker Pro saves your data automatically. And of course I went, no. Because in layout mode, it'll pop a dialogue and ask you. And then a lot of people like that. But then if you're in schema and stuff, it does. But it asks you if you're sure you want to save it. In scripts, you have to save it. That's not what they're going for. They're going for it in browse mode. They should have said in browse mode. They didn't do that badly. Uh, not a great question. FileMaker Pro, uh, this is a good one. Hey, the, for those of you who watch Nick Hunter, value list can be based on another table. All right, so there you go. Everyone, if you just want to if you just want to take this test right now, just hang up, shut off the chat, shut off what we're doing, and go take the test. You'll get a pass. Feel free to come back and let us know what, how you did, okay? Because Claris wants the more people certified, the better. It means that you're engaged, you love the product, you're using it. All right, so we're going to dial up the level of difficulty here with the next set of questions, okay? So this is the, the middle test, the specialist test. Uh, all my senior engineers still whizzed right through these and got like 96%. In fact, I've got junior engineers who are taking these who are kind of passing, like Margaret got an 80% didn't study. All right, so uh, what are anchors and what do they do? Just, just, I'm not going to get, it doesn't ask that question, but that's the short version. So anchoring, layout mode, left pane, which has fields and objects and add-ons. I don't think that's on the test. I don't think. Right panel has four panes. Okay, so if you are, oh, anchoring is the position pane right here. I don't think that's on the test, but you should understand if you click on an object here, what is kind of, I would just say off the top of your head, what's the default? I don't think that's on the test, but you should know what that is. And if you do this, this, and this, what does that do? You know, they're going to come up with some other things, right? Um, uh, what is the result when you turn on all the little check boxes? What happens? if you, I normally use this and uh, this and this right and down or right and top. Um, if you do this one, I think it just spreads it thing all. They, okay, they don't have an answer that spreads it everywhere, but that's kind of the answer. It spreads it. It's almost, I almost never, I don't think. Anytime I do where it happens, it's because I turn all four of those on. I almost, I don't think I've ever used it. Auto enter options in FileMaker. We talk about auto enter all the time. What would be the normal thing you would use an auto enter for? To find a date on Tinder? No. Uh, how about this? Trigger, uh, does script triggers have anything to do with uh, uh, auto enter in script script definition? So if I go to fields, I go to here. Why would you use uh, auto enter options? Why do you use these generally, right? Hot date on Tinder, uh, set up script triggers. See anything in here about script triggers? Anyone? There is lookup right here. Which means that there's one of these deals that there's more than one correct answer in here, but it's it's that's not it. They're looking for the low hanging fruit kind of stuff. What statement describes about auto resizing feature in FileMaker? That's an interesting one. Margaret, do you have any thoughts about the auto resize? The auto resize and file. Oh, one of these is an NJ. Do we have NJ in here from Australia? Yeah. They literally wrote this question about you. NJ made a sample file, which is awesome which as you put text in it, it knows how big the field is and it resizes that. That only works if NJ builds you a demo or some sort of custom deal. So what statement best describes the auto resizing feature in FileMaker? The auto resizing is, once again, we're back over here to the, the, uh, the position. Yeah, auto resizing is this anchoring thing. So does, does auto resizing automatically scale the text up and down? No, thank you, NJ, for causing a false question to be put on the test. Determines how an object resizes and positions itself in the window size changes. Could be. Resizes images automatically to fit on a layout. Uh, that's auto resizing is this right here. It's not the part where you click on a container and you do container shenanigans and stuff, okay? Allows the layout to automatically adapt to the size of the device being used. The last one, if you're a web developer, is a, basically they're saying, if you turn this on, the layout becomes responsive. It auto reflows to iPhones, iPads, things like that. That's not what that does, right? What is commonly used uh, script step to refresh? Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. There's a bet. There's good. There's a good answer here, but there's a better answer. So I need to pick on someone. Yeah, welcome, NJ. All right, 
I pick on Mike Walsh, but I know he knows the answers to all these already. He's an expert. Kathy, are you back yet? Are you alive? Jesse, how about you? We want to try another one, Jesse? Ready for this? How good are you at scripting, Jesse? I need a I need a Are you like beginning scripting? You're a ninja. How good are you at scripting? Ninja and training. Okay, Jesse, here you go. Line it up. You write you write a script. Okay? You write a script. What and you set some data that goes into a global field on a layout. And but it's in the script. So the the va had a value, you run a script and that and you know that the global has a new value. It said instead of said instead of saying yellow, it says blue. But when you, when you're back to, when the script ends, it still shows the previous value. It hasn't refreshed. Okay. So what is the common script step used to uh, refresh? Re well, they're asking about refreshing an object or refreshing a, an object in a portal. Okay. So can you tell me, Jesse, what are the three refresh options? David, do not cheat. What are the three refresh? There used to be one. I'll just give you the hint. It was refresh window was the original one. And that forces a total reload. And it's a really expensive bandwidth-wise uh, script step to call. So there are two other refreshes. Can you tell me the one that you would use? Uh, refresh object and refresh portal. So if you're going to refresh a portal, refresh the portal. If an object, have an object. Let's talk about anchoring. So let's talk about portals. So if you mix two topics together, you have a portal. Okay, you go on the portal and you, like if I come over to, is it this one? Okay, there's a portal right here. I click on the portal. Ah, here we go. There we go. Here you go. Here's your portal. If I click on the portal, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Don't freak out. You can see that the portal has all these anchorings turned on. So the, the as the window gets bigger, the portal will get bigger. What happens? Will the, will the, will the portal rows get fatter, wider? And that's not an unreasonable question. Or will there be more portal rows displayed? I'm not going to even answer that question, but uh, you should know that one. Okay? Yeah, it's the default behavior is more portal rows, right? If if it depends if there are any items within the portal that are anchored. Can you make it fatter, Mike? I've never done that before. I didn't even know that was a thing. The problem is, is that it's a beginner test, or the, the, we're on the intermediate test, right? So anyway, now. The other day we were talking about uh, using the uh, validation in FileMaker. Okay, so what do we? Uh, everyone else here, what do we talk about? Uh, so sometimes Claire's can ask questions here that are um, mm, 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 telling you to do things that you should never do. So what do we talk about over here? Auto enter. If you're in a field, you define a field and you have this options button over here. You have options, right? Click on options. Auto enter. Validation storage for Figurana. Figurana is Japanese. I don't know anything about Japanese. Storage is about indexing and container storage, things like that. Auto enter is awesome. Validation should be burned. It should never be used. It should have a little skull and crossbones here. So question, if you want to ensure a field's value is one that is predetermined, which validation method should you use? I would say validate with a script. That's, if that's one of the answers they have here, that'll get you the wrong answer, but it is the right answer because it's the best practice. Strict data type. Value inclusion, it's a member of a value list. What they do is they come over and you say, oh, you got to make sure that the that a uh, member of a value list over here, this one. And so you say it's part of a value list. The problem is with this is that it's going to throw dialogues that don't make sense, custom messages that, you, messages that you can't customize. It's just really bad. So it should be validate with a script. That is not the answer. So just keep that in mind. They're going to throw a, I don't know, consider a softball, but it's really a bad answer. Okay, so we're motoring right along. Other questions, Margaret? How are we doing? We're doing good, I think. I don't really okay. see questions, but people are definitely interacting. So, okay, so you have at, uh, we're about a third of the way through the last test. We're going to try to race to get this done. And this is the intermediate test. Once again, you, once you're done here, you should you know feel free to watch Mark's videos. He does a great job. But I kind of editorialize a little bit around the edges because I want all of you to be successful. So when I say don't use something. They're testing you on something you shouldn't use. That's just me trying to, I'm trying to help you be successful. Uh, you've been asked to generate a sales report, blah, 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 blah. And you want uh, sales by employee year at a grand total to bomb report. Oh, <laughs> what is the minimum number of summary fields required to accomplish this? So when you are on a list view and you have a summary field that you define a summary field. So when you decide to define a summary field, here's a summary field. This is a summary field. It can be placed in different 
locations on a layout to do different things. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a very good skill set to have. Go watch it. I can't cover it right now. But you need to understand that a summary field can be dropped in a header, a body part, a footer, or a sub-summary. It will deliver different content. Okay, you need to understand that. It's not a hard question, right? Um, what ends up happening is that, you know, you're in a layout mode. We go back over here to mouse touch. Let me see like invoices and some sort of like multi-page report. And so you have this, uh, if you put a sub-summary field in here, like I think these are sub-summaries here. Now those are related record, doesn't matter. Um, if you put it here, it'll do one thing. If you put it here, it'll do something else. So you can actually define one field and have it be recycled a number of different times for you. It's pretty cool, okay? I think they're, they're testing on that, uh, on this, that you should know that, okay? And then notice that important, and then if you don't remember this, you'll remember to get this on the test. When I just defined uh, the summary field over here, Nothing in here was defined by where it goes on the layout. This is all, it's a total of, it's an average of, it's a count, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, and most of you don't even know what that even means. Um, I pretend like I know what it was because once upon a time I had to deal with that when I was an engineer. So a uh, fraction of a total, list of. List is useful. That's a very interesting one, right? Okay. Just understand that if you see these, these have really nothing to do with where that goes, where that field goes. That makes sense? The field, you define it here, and then you stick it wherever you want. You don't have to presuppose where it goes because they're testing you on that, okay? Moving along. Oh, here's another one. This is great. Interactive container. So when you're in a container field in FileMaker, okay, this is another one of those. I told Nick to quit doing it. I told Jonathan Ray to quit doing it. They both did it. They both called me over the last year whining that their customers were pissed off because the interactive containers quit working. And if it quits working, which it will, randomly do because it's a web viewer, right? You can't fix it because it's a Claris bug. And you have to call Claris and beg and plead. You got to call Clarice and she have to tell her to fix it. She might fix it or she might tell you that she's busy eating donuts and she doesn't want to bother, okay? So understand that it gets back to these container fields. Do, 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 do. I go to browse mode, I go home, I go to contacts and you've got a container over here. Here's a picture of uh, someone. Let me see, click over that. Here is the field right here. Um, if you come over here, actually, is that the slide? No, that's the actual container. There's a container. All right, come over here. You come down here, there's images and interactive, okay? What does interactive do? Besides, you shouldn't use it because the, the thing is it works great until it doesn't. And if you want your customers to call you on the phone, to rip your head off because they quit working, use that feature, okay? But if you turn it on, what does it do, okay? It allows you to interact with content, allows you to play with PDFs and do all sorts of interesting things, okay? Understand that in a container, you cannot do image editing or anything other funky stuff in a container without monkey bread or some other crazy stuff. So just keep that in mind. Notice that there's nothing over here about make it smaller, make it lighter, make it faster. Really, the images option right here is the fast one. There's nothing down there that says, you know, start playback automatically. Can't really see it. Disable this, that, you know, things. Just remember, son, and notice there's nothing in there about encrypt the container. It's super encryption container. Do encryption. That's this stuff right here. Do you see anything there down there about encryption or speed or recite? You know, no. Popovers. What can popovers do? What's a popover, everyone? Know what popovers do? What can you put in a popover? Can, what what kind of object can you put in a popover? Okay, that one's real easy. It just popover says popover is a button that displays a window. Is what David describes it as. It displays a region that. Okay, fine. All right, well, let's just do this real quick. It's that was a bad enough answer that I'm worried for David. Dave, David Angel. I like David Angel a lot, so I want David to be successful. Click on buttons right here. Click and hold. It's a popover. I define it right here, and then it throws up. This little screen, I'm going to say, oh, this is also on the test. You can decide where this will try to go, okay? So here's the popover. It's kind of a little window, but it's not based upon a layout. It's it's a little region that's in here. And what can you put in here? You can put anything in it, okay? And also, you can ask it to, you can, th these options, these are buttons here that tell you where you want the display if it can. Now, notice I told it to display above but it's right at the above, it doesn't fit. So it only does these if it can fit. 
It's kind of dynamic like that. So it attempts to follow your instructions. It tries to comply if it can, right? So that's a popover, very important. <laughs> Jesse's description of a popover with a bonus real estate, which I approve of. Actually, I like that. It's a good one. I, most <laughs> Jesse could Je Jesse could come on the show anytime. It sounds like a person with a sense of humor. If you have a just window script step, go figure out what the adjust window script step does, and play with it a little bit. Remind yourself what it can do. Um, they have a question here. Well, the adjust window script up to allow you to minimize the size of something while keeping all the items visible. Blah blah blah. It's kind of some funny ones. Uh, a portal filter can display records from multiple tables that are not related to. So this gets back to forget filtered portal. Can a portal display data from multiple non-related? And, 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 and then then of course you have someone like Mike Wallace or Kyle saying yes, you can. But can a portal display non-related data? If it's static text on the screen, you somehow jam it in there, but that's not what they're talking about, right? So generally, a portal only works if it's connected through a relationship as a general rule. If the relationship isn't functional or doesn't work, it generally won't display anything. Of course, here comes Mike's answer, which will probably contradict mine, but these are my answers are sufficiently safe for the test. You'll be okay. What is the per primary purpose of a summary field in FileMaker, okay? Does it store pictures of your best friend? Does it store a audio recording of your dog? That one's super easy. What does it do? What the results of a summary field can be edited in browse mode. A web viewer can be, and that, I'm moving on. They're typing, they're going fast, okay? A web viewer can be configured to display a progress bar while loading content. See, most of this stuff has nothing to do with Kyle Williams or NJ, but this question should say, Yes, if using Kyle Williams, or yes, if it's, it, can you use a web browser to configure a progress bar? Oh, while loading content. Okay, I misread, thought, I misread that. I was in the test, I'm like, I, I need Kyle Williams to build a progress bar, and then like a little custom function or something. They're talking about, uh, I miss even read this now, and I, now I read it for the first time and actually get what they're saying. What are all the options over here, okay? You can interact with the, interact with the content if you want, Display the content in find mode if you want. Display progress. That's what they're talking about. Display status messages. I make a code. A lot of JavaScript, blah, blah, blah. I was thinking about the Kyle. See, we do such cool things on the show. Progress bar, stuff like that. But sometimes NJ or Kyle do some really great things. And then um, and I instantly go to them like, oh, yeah, we can do a progress bar in a web viewer. But they shouldn't be asking me about Kyle Williams in the test. Jesse's response from earlier was, uh, it can list and summarize and stuff, or rather in sum. I don't know off the top of my head if it has to be a found set, but I feel like yes. Yeah, summary fields uh, work against the found set generally, and that the, found, the, the affected found set could be different if it's in different parts. Like if you have a sub-summary, it'll be a little different, but generally it's a total. Generally, summary started off live back in the day in FileMaker 2. All they would do is total up the found set. That's all they would do. Now they can do other things now, but they generally operate that way. So just remember that. This is great. I love this one. We're back to this validation uh, crap, right? Why is field validation a necessary component of a database management? You should think about what loosely, not like using their, their tab, but Validating, okay, if I say generically, forget FileMaker, Oracle, SQL, Salesforce, doesn't matter. Why might you want to validate data that people put in? And that's that question. Oh, bo Boolean, uh, Boolean uh, values, right? So Boolean, zeros, no, ones, yes. When uh, using FileMaker to field validation, to validate by calculation, the results of true allows the data to be saved while false prevents it, right? So one is true, one is yes. It's like the old TV shows. If the dog barks at you, one, one bark is no and two barks is yes. Well, you can't tell a dog not to bark because that doesn't, you don't know the dog heard the question. So it's zero is false. One is true. That's a kind of a Boolean question. When we use a filtered portal to enhance the speed of loading a database, to encrypt data, that's a good one. I, I'm reading things here. They're not necessarily the correct answers. To display data from an unrelated table within a portal. We're back to Mike Wallace's thing. Mike says you can do it. Here, it's a wrong answer if you go down that road. To display records from related table where the relationship differs by the filter data. 
All filters do in a filter, if you have a portal and you put a filter on it, you go over here, you put the filter on it, it's just gonna, it's gonna narrow down what you would have gotten anyway. So here's the deal. If you have a portal, forget the sort, you have a portal, it shows you 100 records. Filtering the portal will allow you to reduce that record set by another criteria. It doesn't, it's not an extend where, oh, good, this other stuff too, okay? It just keeps constricting it down. A web viewer allows you to, hey, Kathy, timestamp, good one. She must be on a delayed uh, thing. I just no, saw that. She just said it took a while to find the discussion area. So Yeah, that's right above there. I'm so sorry. But I like to include everyone to have a conversation here. Uh, web viewer allows you to interact with content that it displays. Remember we, we talked about the web viewer here momentarily ago, right? You double click it and the options in there. Let's do it. It's, it's actually apparently on the test here twice. So let's do it one more time. Where's a web viewer? There's a web viewer. I'm just going to drop it on here. It's going to come up. So what are what are these? Allow interaction with object. It's checked on or off. So yes or no. Enable operation in find mode. Yes or no. These are the default settings here. But show the progress bar. Not in J. Okay. To say status messages, I don't know. Website can't be found. It's fraudulent, malicious content. I'm actually encoding the URL. Encoding URLs like when they put a percent. Like if you have a space in the URL that's kind of illegal, it puts a percent 20. You ever seen the weird kind of encoding that goes on for some of you? Uh, allow JavaScript, right? So once again, remember those. Because when you were all done here, all of you, and I got five questions left, just hang with me. Then you're going to go take this test. It's super easy. You'll be done. And then you can uh, share your badges. I got this next question wrong. Okay. Here's the one I got wrong. When using a new Windows script step, what window style provides a window that is modal? Okay. Style. First, what is modal? Okay. Modal is, is when it pops a modal dialog, means you can't do anything else. Okay. You cannot do anything else. So if you pop, like if, I, if I'm in browse mode and I have another window right here, is that either one of these windows modal? No, because I can jump here and do stuff. I can jump here and do stuff. David says that modal is the top of a parent window. So modal is uh, a weird word. When I think modal, modal, I think... modal is a word I learned from Chris Moyer back in the day. So if I do the script debugger, notice it hangs out here. It's kind of it glued on top, but I can still kind of go around it if you can get this stuff, right? So it modal is where it really locks everything else out, okay? Um, there are two questions here that I think are, are the two. What what it, well first? What are the types of windows you can create? You can create a document window, which is like a copy of itself. Like if I go up here and I say, I mean, if I like I'm in a window and I say new window, this is essentially a document, another document window. Okay, that's a document. Then you have a floating window, which is the idea of the uh, like the data viewer. It's floating above. You can get the other stuff, but it's always kind of you know even though I'm over here and I'm doing stuff. I'm underneath this window. So if I type, it goes underneath. It's not going to jump above. This thing is like floating. It's like the first Ghostbusters movie way back in the day and Sigourney Weaver's floating three feet in the air, right? It's a great line from Ghostbusters. I have a girlfriend. I find her interesting. She's interesting because she floats three feet in the air, right? Movie references, right? So that's a floating window, okay? A document window is just another window. There's a dialogue window. Claire's created a dialogue window for FileMaker 14, and it has modal properties. I put that answer. I got it wrong. They, I don't know. Mark Larshell should know this, but a car, the new type of window is a card style window. It's modal as well. They're both modal. They're both modal. I think the answer to their the answer to that one is card, but I put dialogue. And this is another one. There's two of these that really suck. Christian Olson missed this one. When setting up a number field to auto enter a serial number, it is possible to include text as well. Okay, that's the first thing you should be thinking. Is this a true or false thing? This means that the field will automatically generate a unique serial number with the accompanying text, true or false. And this one, half my staff get this wrong. It's, it's one of these things that absolutely, if it does it, you should not do it. And back, and back when they went from FileMaker 11 to 12, they re-engineered the engine to be very negatively happy if you put text and numbers like that. You're not, it may misbehave. And so this one is actually uh, true. 
right? David Angels put C0001. The C, actually CO, that's a C. David's is interesting, Margaret. I don't know if you want to type that, but um, let me come over here to Discord real quick. C O zero zero one. That's a C. That's a Charlie Oscar zero zero one. Those are slightly different right there, and we do this all the time. But I try to define them as text fields. They're text because it's text. Um, if you define it as number, and then you do some math on it, I don't. Bad juju is going to happen. It's not going to crash or anything, but the results won't be what you expected. A lot of people do calculations; they get weird shit happens or a relationship doesn't work. It's because they've defined it wrong. So this says. This tells you it's possible to set, basically they're saying it's possible to set this up incorrectly and it will generate a number with text and it's actually true. This was a weird one here. So here's a question. Portal filters can only use parent table fields as, and it's not a really great, well-written question. Uh, and I would so what this is, when they ask, when I ask this question, I'm not gonna give you the answer, I'm just gonna phrase the question better for you. Portal filters, which we've discussed, when you set them up, there's a little calculation in there. They're saying that the calculation can only use values from the parent table that you're on. This number one on 24, actually, when I took the test, I went to layout mode to see this, right? Because I thought the NJ might do it. This is a, the question number. We're almost at the end. When you click and drag a, you, you, you can, you may click and drag a page margin to adjust it while in layout mode. And I've been using pages lightly on the Mac. And that's something that pages will do. Like if you're in pages over here, you know, Steve Jobs' word processor, it would do all that, right? And so I was like, well, when you're in layout mode, let me go to a different layout here. Let me go to a report layout. Let me go to invoices. Back to this one again, like something like this, okay? It said, when you click and drag the page margin, you adjust it while it's in layout mode. Well, with this, and I'm adjusting it, but that's not the page margin. The page margin is the, if you, it's kind of hard to see. Where do we go to another one here? If you go to uh, like, a, like a home screen, here we go. And I go to layout mode, go to layout mode. And if I grab, this is the, the area that is affected. But if you go far enough down here, and if it's turned on, it should be turned on here and I don't see it. Let me see view. Ah, page breaks, okay. These are page breaks, which I, I assume means page margin. Right. So if you come down here, page margins. So you can't grab these and move these around. You, they have to be going to page layout setup and you have to go to printing and then adjust it or wherever you adjust the. Yeah, it's in here, I guess. Properties, form view, right? Or page setup where you have the. Uh, where's that at? I'm blowing this. Page setup, layout setup. Create. No. Where is that at? Where do you set these? Uh, those at? I almost never mess with it anymore we used to do a lot of printouts you want to have that david where's that at yeah it was grayed out but i think if you're in browse mode it'd be a visible view now it's gone entirely right yeah i'm not clear on that but whatever there is there's no margin the only thing you can drag around are those little blue guides right the little blue guides that you see right you can do those but you can't do uh the page margin layout in print uh, change size, I think. Yeah, that's, oh, print. Well, there's no print. Layout. Well, would you go to your page setup in here? You can kind of do it in here, but it really doesn't talk about the margins and stuff. Somewhere in here that's buried. It's almost never use it. I'm surprised they even asked a question about it, right? Body. Yeah, that's the normal stuff that we do. I don't know where it's buried at. So save layout, revert layout, change theme. There's the theme change. I don't think it's in there, right? Layout setup, part setup. It's got to be layout setup. Views, printing, fixed, fix. Oh, fixed page margins right there. Okay, that is it, fixed page margins. So yeah, you cannot drag them around in layout mode, okay? Last question. When designing a layout with NJ or Jesse, which is accurate? These are just crazy questions to think about. Script triggers do not work on global field edits. Like if you say on edit or something, script triggers can go everywhere. Global fields can be indexed for faster searching. What do global fields do? And what is indexing for? Right, all of you should know this. Indexing is about high speed searching and setting up related data, but high speed searching of values 
well, if you only have one value in a global, how much searching do you have to do? Is ind indexing even part of that, right? Global fields can be placed on layouts in any context. That sounds good to me. Scripts can modify. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. A script can be run to modify glo a global fields for all users. Oh, and I would say all connected users. See, there's another one that's not really great, well written. This is assuming a multi user solution, right? Global, you can write a script that changes the global values for all live users that are connected. Global field values are the same for all users. There has been a request to Claris to say, you know, we're done, uh, to make a global field that is like that, is persistent across everywhere, everyone, everything. I don't know if they're going to do it or not, but that has been a request. I look forward to you folks. If you folks uh, pass it, send me an email that you passed it, put your little stamp in there. Keep in mind, so let's talk about the logistics of this. If you want to get credit with Claris for this, the email that you use for your community account should be the email that you normally they identify you as. The second thing is when you pass the test, you're going to get an email from this website called Credly. Credly. It's like Credly, but it's Credly. Credly by Pearson. Here we go. And this is what Claris does is that they take this test and they and it or the test is probably a Credly test. I'm not sure. But anyway, it they Claris notifies these folks, and these folks will email us saying, Hey, you've received received a new certification award. A, a, a major, major award. If I say it's a major, major award, what movie reference is that? It's a major, major award. It must be important. A major, major award. You have to click on the email and hit accept. And then you'll get credentials for this website if you care. I know we went a little long. I pulled a Nick Hunter, went long. Tomorrow will be shorter because so far there's only on the server side just the beginning test. But it's got some good questions in there. All right, folks, I'm going to run the closing credits. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. Biomaker license, uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Biomaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir. Oh,